Good morning. Welcome. Today's Chumash portion for the Thursday of the portion of Noah Hamishi, chapter 9, verse 8. We learned that Noah, his wife, their three sons and their wives spent a year, a solar year, in the ark from the, uh, the month of Cheshvan until the month of Cheshvan the following year, from the 17th of Cheshvan in the 600th year of Noah's life to the 27th of Cheshvan in the 601st year of Noah's life. And in yesterday's portion, we learned that God commanded Noah and all of the other members of his family, referred to in legal terms as Noahides or Noahides, he gave them seven commandments. And these are known as the seven Noahide laws, the seven laws that every single human being is obligated to observe. It was only at Mount Sinai years later when God gave the Jewish people 613 commandments that those commandments came to be, but there are seven general commandments that apply to all of humanity, and that was reiterated to be given to all of humanity once again at Mount Sinai. So now we study chapter 9, verse 8. By Yomer Elohim el Noach, and God said to Noach, be al and to his sons, we learned that Noah had three sons, Shem, Chom, and Yephes, Ito, who were with him, Lamor, saying, Nine, Va'ani, and I, Hinini, I am about to make him as Brisi Yitchem, establish my covenant with you. And this is the covenant that you have to keep my laws, and I'll take care of you, but in any event, never again will there be a flood of universal proportion. Never again will anything of this magnitude occur. And with your children after you, I'm establishing a bris, a covenant. Verse 9, I am maskim ani imachrashi, I agree with you. Shahaya Noach Doeg, because Noach was hesitant, he was worried. Lasig Bipiria Virivya. Noach said to himself, Why should we go and have more children and bring children into the world? Because they're just gonna die in the next flood. So what's the use? So it's all not worth it. Ad until Shehifticha Hakodish Baruchu. God promised him, never again to destroy the world. If there would be any type of devastation, if there would be any type of inundation, if there would be any type of flooding, any type of death by water, it would be extremely localized. It would never again be universal. And that's exactly what he did. Hashem promised him that. And then at the end of the promise, Omar Allah, he said to him, Hinani maskim, I agree, la says to make kiyum v'chezek, a strong symbol, symbolic gesture, v'chezek bris, to strengthen this covenant, l'aftachosi of my promise, v'etten l'chaois, and I'll give you a sign. What sign are we talking about? The sign of the rainbow. Ten, before I go to ten, I just want to point out an interesting teaching in the Zohar. Where the Zohar talks about Noah as being symbolic for each and every one of us. We're all Noah. And the Zohar says, Ve'ela told us Noah, Noah ish tzaddik, that the Torah opens up by describing Noah as a ish tzaddik, as a man of righteousness, the Amech Kulam Tzadikim says the verse. Every single one of your people is considered a tzaddik. So when we talk about Ela told us Noach, Noach ish tzaddik, in a sense, 
It also refers to you and me and to every one of us. Tomim, we have to be complete and righteous. And we have to walk in God's ways. And then God will care for us. And the sign of that is the rainbow, which is a sign to each and every Jew, that there is a bris, there is a covenant between Hashem and the Jew, that he should keep the covenant of godliness, and God will keep the covenant to care for him. So specifically, not only is this talking about the world and Noah, but it's also talking about the obligations of every ish tzaddik. So that's a teaching in the Zohar. Very interesting. Ten, the ace kol nefesh achaya, back to the verse. I'm also establishing this covenant with every living creature, asher itchem, which is with you. Bo'ef, whether it's the birds, ba'behem, or the cattle, b'chol chayas, or the wild animals of the earth, itchem, who are with you, mikol yetzei hateva, anything which came forth from the ark, l'chol chayas, or it's anything, any one of the animals of the land of the earth. Ten chaya sorts itchem heimad mesalchim avbriyas. Those are the ones that walk with people. Mikel yitz yateva lohavish kotsim urumoshim. Those are the ones that are swarm and crawl. The chel chaya sorts lave amazikim. Even demons sheinu bechlal chayit sheitchem, which are not with you sheinu ilcham avbriyas, because demons usually conceal themselves from people. They also have my commitment that they will not be destroyed. Eleven, and I will establish my covenant with you. Never again will all flesh be cut off from waters of the flood. Never again will a flood come and destroy the entire world. There's a Balaturim here, where the Balaturim says, going back to verse 9, Vani. Hinani, makim as brisi itchem, says the Balaturim. You take the four words of makim, es, brisi itchem, take the last letter of every one of those words. It makes up the word mesim, metim. And this is an allusion to triat ha metim, that he also entered into a covenant with them that after death, death is not an end, but when Mashiach comes, there will be the resurrection of the dead. When all of the righteous people will be once again brought souls into bodies and will once again live to receive the ultimate reward, that's part of the covenant of the post-flood era. 11. Vahaki Mesi, and I will, I, we did 11. Okay, 12. I guess I have to do Rashi in 11. Vahaki Mesi, Es, Akiyam, Lebrisi. I'll confirm my covenant to my Kiyume, Es, Hakeshes. This sign of the rainbow, as he goes on to say, 12, and God said, this is the token of this covenant, this is the sign of the covenant, which I make between you and me, and every living creature which is with you, for eternal, perpetual generations. Now, as I mentioned briefly, what we learn from here is that the rainbow is not a cause for celebration. The message of the rainbow, when we see a rainbow, the message could be, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. But you know what? The good news is that although if it was pre mobile time, I would have destroyed the world, I'm not going to destroy the entire world because I promised. But a rainbow is nothing to celebrate. Because a rainbow means, if not for the rainbow, what might have been? And the truth is that in every generation there is some imperfection. Humanity is a very imperfect creation. And here, this will help us understand this, Rashi. Ledeides elam, the word ledeides is written chaser without the vav. Sheyesh deides, there were a select few generations. Shalehutzrechulaes, that never needed this special sign because they never truly had the evil that we talk about. Why? Speaking specifically of the Jewish people, the Jewish people were totally righteous in these generations. Kimei, for example, the generation of Chizkiyahu, king of Judah, 
who was a super-righteous king. Torah study was abundant. Every child was a scholar. It was an amazing time of spirituality. The data and the generation of Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, not that it was a pretty generation, there was tremendous Roman persecution, but the spiritual level of that generation was amazing. So for those generations, or as Hasidus teaches, these great tzaddikim, like Chizkiyo Amelech and Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, protected the entire generation with their righteousness. Other generations also had righteous people. They also had great tzaddikim. But still from time to time, we benefited from the covenant, good morning, of the rainbow. Eskashti nosati be'onon, my bow, my rainbow, have I placed in the clouds. And I pointed out yesterday that although a rainbow is a natural phenomenon, that when the sun hits the clouds from a certain direction and certain conditions are in place, a rainbow will happen. It's part of nature. So you could be a cynic and you could say, what does the rainbow have to do with God? It's a certain way the sun hits the clouds with certain natural conditions. Of course it is. But those natural conditions were created by God. And they were created after the flood and not before the flood. The heis of the ace bris, it will be a sign of a covenant, it's between me and between the earth. It shall come to pass. When I bring clouds upon the earth, and you'll think, uh oh, here comes another flow. And then the rainbow will be seen in the clouds. When it will enter into my thoughts, to bring darkness and destruction, destruction to the world. 15. I will remember my covenant. Asher beiniu beinechem, which is between me and you, vein kol nefesh chaya bechal basar, and between every living creature of all flesh, v'la'yia eid hamabul lemayim, and never again will water of floods become a destructive, universally destructive flood. The shachas kol basar to destroy everything. Bein elokim ovein nefesh kol chaya ovein kol nefesh chaya. What does this mean? Be'midas hadin shalmaila. Elokim connotates the attribute of justice on high. O be'neichem, and between you, shayil le'lichta, we should have written be'ni, between me, u be'in kol nefesh chaya. Elazeo medrashi, this is what the medrash says. Ki she'tova y'midas hadin, when the attribute of justice will come to prosecute le'katerang aleichem, to bring charges against you, le'chayev eschem, to condemn you. Anirei esais l'anisker, I will see this covenant. And in general, the whole idea of a covenant, or let's use another word for a covenant, a treaty, is an interesting concept which we should explore for a minute. What is the idea of a covenant? If God says to humanity, post Noah, I love you, I will never again destroy you, then what does he need a rainbow for? Then he loves them and he'll never again destroy them. Or if God says to the Jewish people, I'm giving you certain mitzvahs, which are covenant mitzvahs. What is the meaning of a covenant? They bind you to me and me to you. An example of the covenant mitzvahs is Shabbos. V'shomru b'nei Yisrael, that's a Shabbos. Os, hi le'olam, the word os, ot, covenant. Tfilun, v'hoya le'os al yodcha. And so on. Bris, covenant. There are covenant mitzvahs. Yom Tov is a covenant. Or a treaty. Two countries sign a peace treaty. What is the meaning of a peace treaty? What do I need a peace treaty for? You want to be at peace with me, you be at peace with me. You don't want to be at peace, don't be at peace. What do you need a treaty for? The explanation is, very simply, from the simple perspective, that even though today we're feeling great about each other, even though today I love you and you love me and we're dancing Havanagila on the White House lawn, but who knows what's going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow you may get me angry. Therefore, I make a pledge of allegiance. I make a commitment to you. I establish a covenant with you that come what may, I am with you and you are with me. And it's something that cannot be undone. Because any treaty 
that can be broken. It's not a, it isn't worth the paper it's written on. And this is one of the questions that the world today needs to ask itself. As we, the world is a very peace-loving world. Everybody likes a peace process. Who doesn't like a peace process? The question is, what is the value of peace if one of the two sides can break the peace at any given time? If a country can say to the United Nations, who has peacekeeping troops, I'm about to attack the other country, do me a favor, go home. And the peacekeeping troops pick themselves up and go home. What's the value of peacekeeping troops? The idea of a covenant is that come what may, the commitment is there and nothing can undo the commitment. Forgive the expression, but that's what's called a Catholic marriage. It's a marriage that, in the simple sense of the word, cannot be undone. Because an ordinary marriage, you don't like the marriage, you get divorced. It's not a problem. So the marriage is not eternal. It is not eternal. The, the whole saying, that American saying, till death do we part, is not true. Till divorce do we part. When is that going to happen? Who knows? Maybe next week if you don't behave yourself. A covenant is eternal. The covenant between Hashem and Noah, between God and humanity, or... On another level, the covenant between God and the Jewish people is an eternal covenant. Shabbos, Tfilm, Bris, they are symbolic of these eternal covenants. They can never be undone. So the true meaning of a peace treaty is that no matter what happens between us, this peace treaty remains in force and cannot be reversed. That's not a reality in the world we live in. That's only a reality between God and Noah. So that's just a little bit of an observation on the whole idea of what the value of a covenant is. A covenant, from God's perspective, is an eternal covenant. Okay, verse 17, I believe. Am I right? Is it 17? Is it 17? And God said to Noah, Zos os habris, this is the sign of the covenant, Asharaki Mesi, which I have established, Beni between me, or Ben Kobosar in all flesh, Ashala Oretz, and it's forever. 17 Zeis Es Habris, Herohu Akeshes, he showed Noah the rainbow, the Omarlay, and he said, Hareya Es Shamarki, this is the covenant, this is it, and therefore you could be sure that never again will this event be repeated. End of today's Chumash portion.